Hi class, in this video, I'll guide you on the review exercise questions on estimation and hypothesis testing for two populations. So let's start. As usual, we will start by extracting the values. We have here two types of fuel enhancers. So we have two groups. So in the first group, the sample size would be 50 lorries. Which gives them the average oil consumption of 40 litres. So X bar will be 40 litres. And the sample standard deviation is 5.4 liters for the rest of the lorries that means in total we have 85 in the first sample we had 50 so the rest would be 35 lorries the average oil consumption is 45 liters and the sample standard deviation is 7.5 6 liters. So because the sample size is large, in this case we will be using the standard normal distribution. So question A, construct a 98% confidence interval for the difference in the average of oil consumption. We'd be using the confidence interval formula for large samples which will be x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus minus z so alpha over 2 would be 0 0.01 and the sample standard deviation of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 would be square root of s1 square over n1 plus s2 square over N2. So we would have 40 minus 45 plus minus class I am pretty sure you could look up the table yourself so I'm giving you my answer it's 2.32 square root of 5.4 square over 50 plus 7.6 square over 50 and this gives us negative 8.48 to two comma negative one point five one seven eight okay now on to question B is there evidence to indicate that the average oil consumption are different when they use this type of fuel enhancer base your answer on the results of part A Okay, in this case, they are not asking you to conduct the hypothesis testing in the usual form that we have been using all this while. You'll be conducting hypothesis testing using the results of your confidence interval. So what's the H null then? Mu1 minus mu2 equals to 0. And the alternative... Different would be mu1 minus mu2 is not equals to 0. Okay, so we will be either rejecting or accepting the null hypothesis using the results from the confidence interval. So this confidence interval is for the difference in the average oil consumption. That means this is mu1 minus mu2 right the 98% confidence interval 
for mu1 minus mu2 and this is the value. Now the null hypothesis says mu1 minus mu2 is equals to 0. Since 0, this value specified in the null hypothesis is not in the confidence interval, then the null hypothesis can be rejected in this case. Okay, I repeat myself. The null hypothesis says mu1 minus mu2 is equal to 0. However, when we calculated the 98% confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2, we get a confidence interval that does not contain the value 0. So that is why in this case, the null hypothesis can be rejected because 0 is not in the interval here. So my conclusion would be since 0 is not in the 98% confidence interval, we reject H null. So if we reject H null, we would accept the alternative. So is there evidence to indicate the average oil consumption are different? Yes, the oil consumption are different. So I would write it as there is evidence to indicate that the average oil consumption are different. Okay, question 2 has been discussed in the ANOVA part 1 video. So, please have a look at that video. On to question 3. You are given two groups. Group 1 and group 2. So, you have the sample size, sample mean and sample standard deviation. So, N1 is 9. N2 is 12. X bar 1 is 8.73, X bar 2 8.68, and S1 is square root of 0.35, S2 is square root of 0 0.40. So for question A, you are asked to find an evidence to support the claim that the two machines produce bottle with different mean diameters. So this would be hypothesis testing. Different would go to the alternative. Mu1 minus mu2 not equals to 0. So definitely the null hypothesis is equals to 0. So assume that sigma 1 square is equals to sigma 2 square. That means the Population standard deviation are equal. However, they are not given and the sample size is small. So we would be using the formula for small samples with equal standard deviation. Where we would calculate the pool standard deviation. And to find the sample standard deviation of x bar 1 minus x bar 2. We would use the pool standard deviation multiplied by 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. And to construct a 95% confidence interval is this formula here x power 1 minus x power 2 plus minus t 0 0.025. And S X bar 1 minus X bar 2. Where this value is from here. And the degrees of freedom is N1 plus N2 minus 2. In this question, you are given the sample mean, 
the sample standard deviation and the sample size is 15 for type 1 and 15 for type 2. Assume that the population variances are unequal. So the sample size is small when you have small independent samples with unequal standard deviation you would be using the degrees of freedom formula the complicated degrees of freedom formula i will show you here this one here while the formula for sample standard deviation of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 will be using this formula so the the Confidence, the 98% confidence interval will be x bar 1 minus x bar 2. T distribution. Alpha or 2 is 0 0.01. Degrees of freedom is the complicated formula that we discussed. Multiplied by S1 square over N1 plus S2 square over N2. Now question B, testing at the 1% significance level, does the experiment show evidence that the mean is different? So this is quite easy. We have the null hypothesis, the means are equal. The alternative, the means are different. And for the test statistics, we'll be using the T distribution. Okay. And the formula is as discussed previously. For the test statistics is x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus mu 1 minus mu 2 where we will take the value from the null hypothesis divided by s x bar 1 minus x bar 2. Okay, so question C. What would your decision be in part B if the probability of making a type 1 error was 0? So the probability of type 1 error is actually alpha. So when alpha is 0%, what happens to the rejection region? There's no rejection region. So when there is no rejection region, your test statistics will always fall in the non-rejection region. So we will always accept the null hypothesis. T star falls in the non-rejection region. So we accept H null. When we accept H null, what is the conclusion? So there is no evidence that the mean of bursting pressure is different for both types of pipe. Or the mean of bursting pressure is not different for both types of pipe. Next question, group 1 and group 2, the sample size is 12 for both groups, x bar. So how do you find x bar 1? You would use your calculator, mode SD or mode statistics and insert all of the values. So x bar 1 will be 1.59 plus up to 1.65 divided by 12. And the value is 1.7783. And again x bar 2 would be 1.66 plus up to 1.80 divided by 12 and x bar 2 will be 1.8. The variance of drying time is known to be 0 
five seven minutes. So you are given the population variance, and the population variance are the same for those two groups. So instead of the sample standard deviation, now we have the population standard deviation would be square root of zero point five seven. Similar here. So question A. Find a 96% confidence interval on the difference in mean drying time for the brands of paint. Now you have two groups where the sample size is less than 30. So the sample size is small. However, you are given the population standard deviation the population standard deviation is known in this case you'll be using the normal distribution so the formula is 1.7783 minus 1 1.8 plus minus z alpha 2 will be 0 0.02 and the formula will be square root of Sigma 1 square, so 0 0.57 divided by N1 which is 12 plus 0 0.57 divided by 12. Now I have already known the value of this. You can look for it yourself. So this is 2.05 and in the end I will get the confidence interval as negative 0 0.6536, 0 0.6102. Question B. Based on the sample information above, an alpha is 0 0.03, so a different alpha. Is there any evidence to indicate that the mean will depend on the choice of brand of paint? So whether the mean, whether the means are different. We have the null, mu1 minus mu2 equals to 0. Alternative, mu1 minus mu2 not equals to 0. And again, we'll be using the normal distribution. x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus mu1 minus mu2 divided by S1 square 0 0.57 over N1, S2 square over N2. And this gives you negative 0 0.0704. So next step is the rejection region. It is a two-tailed test and alpha was 0 0.03. So this will be 0 0.015. And by referring to the standard normal distribution, you get this value as 2.17 and this one as negative 2.17. The next step is the comparison. This would definitely fall in the non-rejection region. Z star falls in the non-rejection region region we do not reject h null or we accept h null so when we accept h null what is the conclusion is there any evidence to indicate the mean will depend on the choice of brand of paint there is no evidence To indicate that the mean drying time will depend on choice of brand of paint so 
So you have two types of ceiling fans and you're given the X bar and S square. So N A is 18 and N B is 15. Assume both populations are normally distributed with unequal variance. So you are not given the value of the population variance. In this case, the formula that we will be using is the complicated degrees of freedom formula. The one here, this one here, and the null and alternative. Mu1 minus mu2 equals to 0. What? What are the technician's expectation? He expected the ceiling fans of type A to have better speed compared to type B. So the speed is in rates per minute. That means you want mu1 to be greater than mu2. Or mu1 minus mu2 is greater than 0. And we'll be using the T test to calculate the test statistics. Okay, next question. So you have two populations. Okay, this question is not clear. Um, I would like to change the question a bit. A research committee selected 50 houses with one unit certified air conditioner and again 50 houses with uncertified air conditioner. So you have 50 houses for the certified air conditioner, 50 for uncertified. So X bar would be 75 here and here is 83. Sample standard deviation 15.4 and here will be 12. Because the sample size is large, we will be using the standard normal distribution in this case. So the question is, is the consumer protection agency's belief proven? What is the belief? Believes that the houses with one unit air conditioner certified have less amount of electric bill. So the null hypothesis, the mean amount of electric bills are the same. The alternative mu1 minus mu2 is less than 0. Okay, on to the next question. So you have two months in the first month and the second month. Sample size, 1,000 and the other one, 1,200. Success. In this case, the success is defective chips. Defective chips. How many defective chips are there? 157 in the second month, 187. So the sample proportion will be 157 out of 1000, 187 out of 1200. So for question A, a 92% confidence interval in the difference of proportion P1 minus P2 would be, so the formula is P1 hat minus P2 hat plus minus if it's proportion we definitely use the z distribution 0 0.04 p1 q1 hat over n1 plus p2 q2 hat over n2 so question b 
do this data indicate that there is a difference in the proportions? Okay. So now would be there's no difference. And the alternative would be there is a difference. We'll be using the Z distribution as a test statistics. But the formula is a bit different. B1. Minus 0 over the sample standard addition of P1 hat minus P2 hat here. So you'll be using the pooled P and Q. Okay, on to the next question. Brand X and Y. Sample size is 9 in both cases. You would have to calculate X bar and the sample standard deviation. So both population variances are equal. You will be using the pool standard deviation and the T distribution for the confidence interval and the hypothesis test. So the hypothesis would be mu1 minus mu2 equals to 0 and whether well, it's the same. So the non the alternative is not the same. Next question. Hypermarket X and Y. I see percentages, so most probably this would be proportion question. So you have 500 buyers and 400 buyers. 28.5% stated that they are in favour. In favour is the success. So P hat would be 0 0.285. And in this case 0 0.356. And alpha is 0 0.01. Is there any reason to believe that the proportion of buyers P1 minus P2 equals to 0. Who are in favour of lipo in hypermarket Y is higher compared to X. So X is less than Y. P1 minus P2. And you'll be using the normal distribution because this is a proportion question. You're asked to find the p-value of this test. Okay, so you'll find the test statistics and then the p-value is very easy. It's simply the probability that z is you're using the sign for the from the alternative less than the test statistic here. That's it. Question number 11 is a requested question. Now, um, the answer at the back of your book is wrong. So, we'll discuss the correct answer. Again, you have two populations. The sample size is 10. And you have to calculate the value of x bar and s. I'm sure you know how to do that. So I'm going to simply write down the values. And S is 16.8724. And here, 11.7945. Okay, the variance is not given but they are unequal. So you'll be using the degrees of freedom formula. I will calculate the degrees of freedom first because it's quite complicated. So this will be 16.8724 square S1 square over N1 plus S2 square over N2 the whole thing square divided by 
S1 square over N1 square over N1 minus 1 plus S2 square over N2 square over N2 minus 1. So you will get 16.1003 and the degrees of freedom if you still remember you are supposed to round down and you round down you get 16 as a degrees of freedom and now the test statistics we'll be using the t distribution x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus mu 1 minus mu 2 over square root of s1 square over n1 plus s2 square over n2 you would get 2.3503 next is the rejection region we haven't determined the null and alternative hypothesis so let's do that now is there evidence to support the claim of the first company what is the claim of the first company the first company claims that their bulbs have a longer average life compared to the second company. So this will be a one tail test, a right tail test. Mu1 e minus mu2 equals to 0. The alternative mu1 minus mu2 is greater than 0. This is a one tail test. Alpha is 0 0.05. Degrees of freedom is 16. By referring to the T distribution table, you get the critical value as 1.746. Next, you compare the test statistics. False in the rejection region. False in the Rejection region. We reject H now, and there is evidence. To support the claim of the first company. So in this question, you have vaccine A and vaccine B. Sample size is the same, which is 20. And this is a proportion question. Um, what is the success? Is there any reason to believe vaccine A is better than vaccine B? Claim or the belief? The belief is the proportion of mice that experience the side effects once they were injected with vaccine A is less compared to vaccine B. E would be the success, experiencing the side effect. This is the success. So P hat would be 8 over 20. And here 11 over 20. Proportion, we use the Z distribution. The null and alternative hypothesis. P1 equals to P2. And the alternative. Vaccine A is better when it has less side effects compared to vaccine B. Okay class, thank you so much for your attention. I hope I made it easier for you to complete your tutorial. And I'll see you in the next video.